Welcome back to the 12th chance of Christmas. Today, let's talk about China. Now, the overridingly important question is whether China can continue to grow. And as you can see from this chart, Chinese growth has eased off very, very significantly. It's still at levels that anybody in the West would greatly envy, but the slowdown is clear and the transition to that slowdown is problematic. Add to that that we have seen the very significant weakening of the yen in the last two years and a long period in which China has steadily allowed its currency to appreciate. That means, as you can see, if you look at the blue line here, which shows you the rate, the rate of the renminbi against the yen, that Chinese competitiveness has diminished very significantly. This could be bad for the Chinese economy. It could also prompt the need for them to start weakening their currency once more, which again could be very problematic indeed. Further, now let's take a look at monetary conditions in China. As a result of that slowdown, you saw late in 2014 an ease by the People's Bank of China and a very dramatic sudden response from the Chinese stock market. It's long been a, a bubbly speculative market. It was the best performing stock market of the year anywhere in the world in 2014, despite the obvious problems of a slowdown in China. And you could also add to this the uh, falls in many industrial commodities plainly show that Chinese demand is slacking. The critical question for the next year in China, can they somehow manage a transition to steadier, slower growth that doesn't rely so much on importing commodities without creating some kind of an accident or without reigniting a speculative bubble? They have a very difficult balancing act. Next time, we'll look at perhaps the central question, the great disjunction here in the US between the bond and stock market.